Good morning. Welcome to St. James Catholic Church. A very special welcome to our guests who have joined us for this Mass. We are honored by your presence and participation. On this All Saints Day, let us stand and sing the Litany of the Saints and help us to ask for the Saints' intercession for our behalf. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given the power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with a seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. <coughs> they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. is the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, on the rivers he made it firm. to see 
shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure, as he is pure. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And A reading from our Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, 
for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, there they go again, those crazy Catholics. First it was Jesus' body and blood, then it was Mary. Don't they know it's not good to worship a woman? Then there's the Pope. And here they go again. Do they really think it is necessary to pray to and rely on the saints. Oh my gosh, I can't find my keys. St. Anthony, will you help me? I am in labor, St. Anne, please. I'm not in labor. St. <laughs> Anne, please help me get through it. Here comes another bad storm. St. Barbara is your gal. I may have been poisoned. Thank you, St. Benedict, for helping me out. You know, I love to bet the horses and play the slots, but it is ruining my life. St. Bernardino can help with that. I love to be on the water, but I am always lost at sea. St. Brendan, pray for us. My marriage is falling apart. St. Elizabeth and St. Joseph will help you through the difficult times. I love to hunt, but I struggle with math. There's a combination. St. Hubert, please help me. And then there's St. James, the patron of pilgrims, arthritis, blacksmiths, and laborers. Maybe I'm an accountant, a banker, a bookkeeper, or a tax collector. St. Matthew, pray for us. These drugs are ruining my life. St. Maximilian Colby will intercede for you if you let him. Have you been bitten by a snake recently or do you have a toothache? Well, St. Patrick is your man. St. Joseph, I hate to bury you upside down, but I need to sell my house. The list goes on and on. Thanks be to God. Is it really necessary to pray to and rely on the saints? Yes. Plain and simple. The saints, or better yet, the communion of saints, they help us. They protect us. They take our needs, our concerns, and our joys to God. So what is a saint? Well, according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, our teaching document, a saint is the Holy One who leads a life in union with God through the grace of Christ and receives the reward of eternal life. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty good to me. Today we celebrate the great solemnity of all the saints, all the men and women, boys and girls who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. Men and women, boys and girls who loved the church, defended the faith, and even shed their blood in protecting the richness and the beauty of what we are still able to do today. Today we remember, we pray, we mourn, we rejoice that the communion of saints are alive and well in our hearts, in our minds, and in our church. 
You know, folks, we live in a world of chaos and pain, of darkness and of fear. We live in a world full of violence and hatred. And you might be asking yourself, Father, where are those saints? They are here. They are in this church. They are present when we celebrate the sacraments, when we pray for the dead. They are watching over us constantly and protecting us. They are trying to shine forth in this dark world. But are we doing everything we can to let them be known? I have felt the power of the saints, and I can assure you they are alive and well. At both my diaconate and priesthood ordinations, I laid on that cold, hard cathedral floor. My heart was racing, my emotions were boiling up inside of me, and as I laid there on the ground giving myself up in total obedience to and for Christ, I felt the presence of all the saints as we called upon them as we prayed for their intercession, all you holy men and women, pray for us. I could not, we cannot do it without the help and the intercession of the communion of saints. When we bring a child to the waters of salvation for baptism, we call upon the saints to bless that child, to guide them, to protect them. When that same child grows up and receives the sacraments, the angels and the saints are there always present. And when he or she is called from this life to the eternal banquet, we trust that the saints will meet them and guide them home. As we sing beautifully, come to his aid, O saints of God, come meet him, angels of the Lord, receive his soul, O holy ones, present him now to God most high. Brothers and sisters, this world is full of saints. This world is full of good people who strive to do good deeds every single day. But sometimes those good deeds get overlooked. And sometimes those good deeds get overshadowed by other things. And that is okay. A saint is not necessarily someone who does something great for the whole world to see. But someone who can do the good and not take any credit for it. As St. John reminded us today, the reason the world did not know us is because they did not know him. The saints help us to not only know God, but to help others know him too. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what we are called to do. To make Christ known to the whole world. And the saints will help us in our efforts. And so the question remains. Are you called to be a saint? How can you become a saint? Well, thanks to Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes are a great place to start, aren't they? Blessed are they who, blessed are they who, blessed are they who. And then Jesus says, rejoice, for your reward will be great in heaven. Brothers and sisters, I assure you, your reward will be great in heaven. And the saints and the angels will help you to get there. You know, maybe we are a little bit crazy. Maybe we do set ourselves up for criticism and for jokes. But what is so wrong about being crazy about Christ and his church? For remember, quoting Pope St. John Paul II, as the Catechism says, the church, then, is the holy people of God, and her members are called saints. Who is called to sainthood? Each and every one of us gathered here today. And for those who, for whatever reason, choose not to join us, they, too, are capable of being saints. All you holy men and women, pray for us.
confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. The saints had complete confidence in God's power to meet all of their needs. Let us have the same confidence as we now present our needs before his heavenly throne. That in union with all the saints, the church on earth may be a faithful bride and servant of her Lord Jesus Christ, bearing faithful witness to his gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that following the example of the saints, the spiritual leaders of the church may seek God's kingdom above everything else and be inspired, inspiring witness of the holy life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that seeking the wisdom of the saints, government leaders may put their own interests aside and make whatever sacrifices are necessary to serve those who elected them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer persecution for their faith and righteousness, may they continue steady in the way of the saints who walk before them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the needs of our brothers and sisters here and in our sister parish of St. Mark's in Haiti, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, let us now pause and remember your servant Mary Baldwin, who has gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of holiness and grace, we offer you our prayers and our petitions, our prayers of blessed Mary, Joseph, and all the saints who intercede for us. May their teaching and witness make us always faithful to you in times of prosperity, and in times of need. For we make our prayers always through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims, advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you have given us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace and love. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room.
Our communion song is number 659, Blessed Are They, number 659.
As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that, coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do me a favor and stand right over here for me, okay? Thanks. Just a couple of announcements. If you're available at 2 p.m. this afternoon, you can join us for the Knights of Columbus Memorial Service. That'll take place at 2 o'clock this afternoon at St. James Cemetery. So thanks to the Knights uh, for putting that on. It's a beautiful memorial service. Again, it'll be at 2 o'clock today at St. James Cemetery. And then you can go home and take a nap and then come back at 7 o'clock. Uh, the choir will present a concert for the poor and the sacred remembrance this evening, 7 p.m. here in the church. Uh, we'll have instrumental uh, musicians from across the region will join us to perform some beautiful musical work. So please join us at 7 o'clock tonight in the church. Proceeds from the concert will benefit the St. Vincent de Paul Society. On behalf of Father Martin, we hope that you will make plans to attend that. Uh, please keep uh, in your prayer those who are preparing for confirmation. I'll be heading down to their retreat center near Bowling Green this afternoon to offer their Mass. So pray for the communion of saints to intercede for the young men and women who are preparing for confirmation. As always, please join us if you have some room in your stomach uh, left. In spite of eating all that candy, we have coffee and donuts in the Rodney Thomas room. So please head that way for some communion and fellowship uh, with fellow parishioners. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the glory and the joy of the saints, have caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. Amen. So that together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where the Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted to perpetual peace, to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 793, For All the Saints, number 793. Uh. 